What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSource, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build your very own badass budget gaming PC around $350. Uh, this is a step-by-step -step guide from the beginning all the way till the end guys. I'm going to be showing you how to flash the BIOS as well as install Windows. If you guys want to see how this PC performs, make sure to watch my benchmark video that I did a few weeks back. I'll have it linked down below. So now that you have all your parts needed to build the PC, you need to make sure you have all the correct tools. A screwdriver is needed obviously and a large flat surface to work on. Having an anti-static mat or wrist strap isn't really necessary unless this is your first time building and want to be extra cautious. I'll go ahead and drop a few good ones down below as well for you. So step one is to install the CPU into the motherboard. So grab the G4560 or whatever CPU you are using for your PC and make sure the golden triangle on the processor is facing the triangle that's sketched on the motherboard. Gently grab the CPU by its sides and place it down without touching the surface area. Do not apply any pressure, it should just fall in place. Once it sits flush inside the socket, lower down the cover and lock it in place. The black cover should pop right off so don't freak out if it does. If you're not installing an aftermarket cooler, then proceed to grab the stock heatsink that came with the processor and make sure that the Intel logo is facing right side up, just like in the video. You need to align the four pins on the heatsink to the four holes on the motherboard. Afterwards, gently lower the heatsink down evenly while making sure the pins match with the holes on the motherboard. Once the heatsink sits on the CPU, press down on each of the pins until you hear them snap in place. Feel free to make sure that it's nice and snug by pulling on the heatsink, that way the entire motherboard lifts up. Make sure all four of the pins are inserted into the holes. As you guys can see here, I'm kind of a noob and I didn't check one of the pins while making this video. So I have to go back and obviously snap it back in place. Next, we're going to connect the fan to the motherboard. So grab the white connector and insert it inside the socket labeled CPU underscore fan one, which should be directly above it. Now it's time to install the RAM. So if you have two sticks, then obviously put both of them in the slots. But if you have one, then put it in the first slot. Make sure you put pressure with both of your hands and press down equally until it snaps in place and the notch is fully seated. So for the rest of the build, we're going to be needing the screws inside the tiny bag that's hanging from the case. So go ahead and remove that and take out four of these screws that are needed to install the motherboard. But before we even do that, we need to install the IO shield. So grab that out of the motherboard box and snap it in the back of the case. Make sure the three circle cutouts are closest to the bottom of the case while you're doing this. Once all four corners snap in place, it's time to slide in the motherboard. Gently lower it down and align the rear ports with the cutouts from the IO shield. Then we can go ahead and screw in the motherboard. There should be one hole in each corner, so a total of four. Use the four screws that we took out of the bag earlier for this. Once the motherboard is secured down, it's time to hook up the power supply. So take that out of the box and with the fan facing down, slide it to the top cutout of the case. Next, you need to take out four of these screws to keep the power supply secured at the top. Since we're back here, let's remove two of the PCI brackets so it doesn't get in the way of our GPU when it comes time for that. The ones you're going to have to remove are the second and third one. You can simply bend them back and forward until they get loose enough and then you can just pull them out. That's what she said. The case has two spots for SSDs, which is really easy. Just put it flat against the back with the holes facing down and then screw them in from the other side of the case. Now, if you're using a hard drive like me, then you have to slide it in the bottom rack with the internals facing down. Then you can proceed to screw it in place by aligning the holes with the hard drive. On the opposite side of the case, insert the final screw to secure the hard drive in place. So we're pretty much done here, all you have to do is hook up the cables and slap on the GPU. So let's start off with the hard drive. Grab the SATA power cable that looks like this coming from the power supply and hook it up to the back of the hard drive. Then grab the black SATA cable that we took from the motherboard box and insert one end to the back of the hard drive and hook the other end to the SATA port on the motherboard. Either one of the four slots over here work. Now let's go ahead and hook up both of the fans before we forget them. So grab the front and the rear fan cables and hook them up together like this using the Molex connectors. Do not touch the other connectors on these. Next up is the USB 3 cable which has a blue tip. This one goes right below the 24 pin socket near the edge of the motherboard. You can't miss it. Next cable is labeled HD audio and this one goes way in the back right below the IO shield. Hook this up to the pins labeled HD audio 1 on the motherboard. 
Then we have the regular USB 2 cable and this one goes right below the USB 3 cable that we just connected earlier. Remember guys, if it doesn't fit, then you are either putting it in the wrong way or it doesn't belong there. Every plug or cable belongs to a specific socket. Now it's time for these annoying connectors. You can also refer to the manual to see a clear diagram of how to connect them in case you guys need it. And there's even a smaller diagram right on the motherboard. But I'll show you guys here as well. The first cable is the HDD LED and this one goes on the bottom right two pins with the words facing to the right. Next up is the power LED plus and minus cables and these go to the left of the HDD cable we just connected. So basically start from the bottom and make sure to connect the positive cable first and then the negative one right on top of that. Next one is the power switch and this one goes right above the power LEDs we just connected and it doesn't matter which direction this one goes in. Finally we can put in the reset switch and this one goes to the right of the power switch that we just connected. Again it doesn't matter which direction you put this in. The next cable we are connecting is to power the CPU socket so grab the two 4 pin connectors labeled CPU and plug this into the socket right above the CPU heatsink. Now we can hook up the giant 24 pin cable needed to power the entire motherboard. This one is really hard to miss because it is the biggest cable obviously. And the final cable we are plugging in is the Molex connector which is needed to power both of the fans. Hook this one up to the other two Molex plugs that we connected earlier for the front and rear fans. Again it doesn't matter if you plug this in the front or in the back it's all the same. So now we're ready to plug in the GPU so grab your graphics card and slide it into the bottom PCI slot. Make sure it snaps in place and that the metal bracket sits flush with the case. Proceed to tighten the GPU in place using at least one of the screws that was provided with the case. Once the GPU is secured, grab the final cable which is labeled PCIe and plug it into the GPU. So that's pretty much it. Your PC should look like leftover spaghetti. You can take this time to cable manage if you like. All I did for mine was wrap the cables together and shove them into the ODD cage up there for the sake of finishing this video on time. But you guys can actually use the back of the PC and route the cables through there as well for a much cleaner look. Alright, so now it's time to install Windows and flash the BIOS. So you guys are going to need a USB drive with at least 8 gigs of space. You also have to buy a CD key before we go any further guys, whether you are paying full price for it or grabbing it for a lot cheaper on the reddit CD key swapper, it doesn't matter, just make sure you select the version of Windows that you want to install. So for this PC I'll be installing Windows 10 Pro. I'll drop a link to the CD key swapper if you guys want to pick one up for really cheap. Next we're going to need the Windows ISO file, so click on the Windows Media Tool link down below which will take you to this website. Now listen carefully guys, there are two links down there. One of them is for Windows 10 and the other one is for Windows 8.1, so click on the link that applies to your PC. Once the program is downloaded, go ahead and open it up and follow the instructions. At this time, please plug in your USB stick into your current PC, not the one we are building. We're going to click on Create Installation Media for another PC and then click on Next and then select the USB flash drive option. Select the USB drive that we are going to install the files onto and then hit next again and wait for the download to complete. Once it's complete you'll get a message stating that your USB drive is ready to go so just hit finish and remove your USB stick. Now you can take the USB drive and plug it into your new PC and boot it up. Now if your PC doesn't automatically boot from the USB drive and gives you an error stating that there is no boot device, then you have to restart the PC and hit F11 so you can get into the boot menu. So once you restart your PC and hit F11 continuously, it will take you straight to the boot menu. So from here select the USB drive that's connected to your PC and it will take you straight to the Windows installation setup. Now if your USB device doesn't show up here, that means you didn't plug in the USB connector to your motherboard, so rewatch that part of the video to make sure you did it correctly. You can also try putting it in a different USB port, so try one of the ports behind the PC instead. So once you get to the setup page, enter the CD key that you purchased and hit next. Make sure to select the correct Windows version that you want installed, otherwise your key won't activate. So I bought the Windows 10 Pro key, so that's the version I selected in this video. Hit next and then you'll have two options here. So make sure you select the custom option instead of upgrade and over here you have to select which storage device you want Windows installed on. If you have an SSD I strongly recommend installing your OS on the SSD but if you only have a hard drive like me then select the hard drive option and hit next. 
If you're using an old hard drive with files on it, then a message will appear stating that you will overwrite all the files if you continue. So just make sure you don't have anything important on there before proceeding. Let the PC do its thing and finish up the installation process. And once it's all done, it will take you straight to the desktop and you are pretty much almost done with the entire build. Now it's time to install the drivers and then flash the BIOS afterwards. I drop links to all the drivers that you're gonna need to install, so all you have to do is click on them and they will automatically download. Make sure you extract each one of them and install all the files if you want your PC to work properly. Installing the GPU driver is very easy. If you're using an Nvidia card, click on the GeForce link below, and if you're installing an AMD card, click on the AMD link. Now that all the drivers are installed, it's time to flash your BIOS, so take a new USB drive, or you can even use the same one that you installed Windows on, and make sure you format it before we continue. You can either download the BIOS file directly by clicking on the link below, or visit the ASRock website and click on the BIOS download link, and then click on the Instant Flash version. Once that's downloaded, open the folder and extract the file to your USB drive. Take the USB drive, plug it into your new PC and boot it up while hitting the delete key immediately. This will take you to the BIOS menu and from here, all you have to do is click on the instant flash icon from the main menu and let it install. Once complete, it will reboot your PC and take you to the desktop and you are officially done. Congratulations for building your very own gaming PC. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like as it does help me out a ton. Making a video like this definitely takes a lot of time and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.